Hi guys, I'm back. And today we are going to try the world's tiniest chain pool. So I went out to try and find a ball chain um, to do the chain pool with. And this is what I found. The only problem with this is that it's not very flexible. So, you know, that's the, the smallest curve you can make with it. So it didn't really work very well. I tried it out. And it, it makes some cute little um, some cute little pieces, but not as tiny as I would like. So you can see this chain here, you know, it, it just sort of conforms to whatever shape you want. So this is just an old necklace chain. Um, it's kind of flat on one side. But we've got a quarter here to show you sort of <laughs> the, the size we're doing here. My dog just sat on my feet. I gotta move, buddy. Okay, so we've got um, just some paint. I, we're just doing blue and white today because I found some paint on the counter that's been sitting there for probably two or three weeks now and I completely forgot about it. So we've got some white and we've got some dark blue. It's phthalo blue. It might be mixed with a hint of black. I don't know. I have no idea what's in my white paint other than there shouldn't be any silicone in it. Um, I don't see any like oily bit on the top and uh, it doesn't smell like silicone. So we've got the white and we've got the dark blue. So we're going to do the white base and then the dark blue chain pull over it. So we're going to keep the, the quarter and the chain hopefully in, in view. Sorry, buddy, I gotta move. And, uh, you know, that's in hopes that we keep this thing in focus. So I'm just gonna pour some white paint over, this right here is photo paper, by the way. It's uh, HP Hewlett Packard photo paper. Uh, these are four by six sheets, and you get like a little hundred sheets in the box. So um, the reason I'm using photo paper instead of my usual uh, paint samples is because the photo paper doesn't warp so it's gonna have a lot of paint on it and I want it to dry nice and flat so we're gonna take it and just pour it off of one side and then I'm going to try to sort of pour it down so we have sort of a nice even even coat with it And hopefully it will be kind of flat. Um, and I would say this is like warm honey, the consistency of warm honey. People are always asking me how thick my paint is. For this, I like it to be sort of like warm honey. Um, for my paint pouring, really I like mine to be more like cold honey. Okay, so we've got this smeared around. I don't want too thick of a layer. I really don't. So we're going to kind of smooth it out just a little bit more. And hopefully it will level out a little bit as it sits here on my surface. I torch that just a little bit so that it will get the air bubbles out. There we go. We're going to let it sit there for a second. Um, yeah, I think that should be good. It's a little thick, a little thicker. Just making sure we're still in focus here. Yes, we are. Okay, so now we're going to take our little, tiny little cup of blue paint. Set the stick aside there. We're going to take our little chain. And I don't think you're going to need much for this. So I'm going to put most of the chain in my hand. And I will be rinsing this out in the sink just because it's so much easier to do it that way. I'm sorry. I know what acrylic paint is made of, so please don't get on to me. <laughs> I'm rinsing it down the sink. So I'm going to just barely, lightly pinch this. I wouldn't even call it a pinch to get the paint off. Um, so we're just going to set it down and try and make a cool pattern with it. And then pull it down towards the center. 
and like I said, my, my white paint is a little thick on here. I would definitely prefer it to be a little thinner. But, you know, that's today. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to get a washcloth wet. And we're going to rinse the chain off sort of in the, the wet washcloth here instead of down the sink. I'm just going to wipe it off well enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, like the, the paint is too thick there, but that's okay. Dip it in a few times. Let the, you know, the, the paint get through the chain there. Pull it off just barely. And let's see what we can do. Let's, let's go the other way. The whole point of doing this teeny tiny chain pull, sorry, I know you can't see that, is to maybe make some pendants with it. Because I'm not sure what else you would do with a chain pull this small. Plus we're just kind of trying to prove that we can do it. <laughs> okay. I hope you guys are still in focus. And let's try, I feel like I need to get some of that blue, that white out of there. It's causing problems. Okay, we're gonna leave that. It's kind of interesting. It may not seem all that interesting now, but once you go stick it into a pendant, it might look kind of cool. So we're going to leave that one. We're going to try a different one. So let's try. Oh. This one's probably going to be a little big for a pendant, but that's okay. There we go. That looks cool. Again, too big for a pendant, but you could do it like a little framed piece, a little teeny tiny framed piece. Um, or like a refrigerator magnet. You could glue these to like a, a 12 inch, I mean not 12 inch, <laughs> a one inch piece of tile. And then and then pour resin over it. All right, let's do one more little pull through there. There we go. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Just maybe like this part you could use as an appendant. Oh, let's try another one over here on this side just because we have the space. Well, we'll do it like we would do a string pull and see what happens. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Maybe do another string pull. Let's get some of that out of there. It's too much white. Then we'll do another, another chain pull like we do a string pull.
That actually worked better than I thought it was going to work. Okay, so we need... Oh, uh, let's do it. Go this way. I don't think I quite did that right. But that's okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. That worked. Alright, let's do one more little pedal through there. And then on to the next step. Okay, so there we are, world's tiniest chain pulls. So now what we're going to do, let me make sure you guys are still in focus, you can actually see what we did. Yay, we are still in focus. <laughs> Woohoo! Alright, so you can see how small they are by our quarter right there. So we're going to, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to bring you back with a few of some dried pieces and show you how to make a pendant with the world's tiniest chain pulls. Okay, so we're back. You can see I've got a few dried baby chain pulls. Um, you know, they sort of trail off into nothing, so. <laughs> but, so, we're gonna try and make a pendant. Sorry, I was thinking. Um, so, I've got a square or I mean, sorry, rectangle shaped pendant here. It's about an inch by two inches. Um, and I've cut out a template here. We've got the outside and the inside. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take our little, our little pieces and see which one would look good. Not that one. That's going to look better. We're going to probably paint white over this and put that in a circular pendant. This one, um, maybe kind of off to one side. This one, probably this is what we're going to use because this is, again, you know, it's got all that sort of junk down there. It doesn't look all that great. So we're going to probably just take a chunk out of the center of that one. So we take our template here and find exactly where we want to cut it from. Do we want negative space at the top? Do we want it going kind of sideways? I don't know, that's kind of cool, kind of at an angle there, kind of like that. So you just move it around, you know, where you think it looks cool. I'm kind of in favor of off to the side like that. It kind of looks neat. Make sure it's balanced, you know, if you got white up here, you want to have a little bit down there, maybe. Um, and then you're going to take this piece. And you're going to set it over top of it. And this one adds actually a little bit too big for this particular template. I didn't realize that when I started um, cutting cutting it out. But, but you can kind of see. Now we're just going to cut around it. We're going to take our tiny little scissors. We're going to trim off the excess. Just because it, you know, it gets in the way. And then you're going to try and cut really carefully around the edges. And I am blind to the bat, so I have a little bit of trouble doing this. And of course, you know, your template is, uh, you know, your piece is only going to be as good as your template. And I know my little template here is not great. I can see this line is kind of crooked. You can try and adjust as you trim around it. See, that's going to be too wide, so I'm going to turn that bottom piece right there. Okay, so, and that piece up there, you kind of see it curves off. So we'll take that off. We've got our little piece. We're going to try and fit it and see where we need to trim it. Clearly, that top edge and maybe this bottom right through there, right, right up there and right down there. But other than that, it looks pretty cool. 
So we're just going to take it and trim just a little bit in hopes that that is enough. And you want to make sure your trim is nice and straight because it will show up. If you do it crooked, it will. you will see it once you pour the resin in there. It'll look kind of junky. So then you fit it in there. That's a good fit right there. We're going to take our scraps and set them aside to throw away. So now we've got our two little pieces here. We're going to get everything else out of the way because we don't accidentally, accidentally want to put glue on anything. So I'm using uh, <laughs> diamond. I want to say this is diamond glaze. Um, the sticker has worn off because I've had it for a long time. But you can you order the diamond glaze online. And I have had this for I don't know how long. At least a year, year and a half. At least. Um, it, it It's basically like super glue. But it dries super, super clear. It's really... It's perfect for jewelry making. So order some of that. Have a couple of toothpicks around. Another great thing for your medicine bottles, the toothpicks fit perfectly in them. So okay, now that I've done all that moving around on the camera, I'm gonna check and make sure you guys are still in focus. Okay, we are. Awesome. So we're gonna take our little painting out, maybe, have it ready, and uh, a lot of times when you open this bottle back up, I usually take the lid off and shove a toothpick up through it because it'll dry, the glue dries in that top, and that's the easiest way to get it out is to shove a, take the top off and shove a toothpick going that way. So we're just going to put a little bit on, you don't need a lot. But you want to make sure you get around the edges well. You want to make sure that you have that seal between the edges of the metal and your little painting. Because if you don't, what happens when you pour the resin is little air bubbles come up and you have to babysit it for three hours. So you want to fit that in there. Just kind of press through the middle first because the glue is going to squeeze out. And you don't want to like smear glue like I just did all over your painting. Although it does dry clear and once you pour, it, pour resin over it, you won't see it. Then you take your little toothpick and mash down the edges so they're nice and straight. And that also helps move the glue around. And it also helps keep your, your painting from getting damaged from you smearing your fingers through there a lot. Then you want to make sure you check all the edges. Don't worry about the little little bit of glue squeezing out. It'll it'll be hidden once you pour the resin on. You'll never see it. Just kind of just set your toothpick down along that edge and mash in. Works really well. Because you want to make sure all the edges are down completely flat. Otherwise, when you pour the resin in, you'll be able to kind of see that it's not that it's kind of wonky. You don't want that. Okay, so that should be good. There's our little pendant, ready for resin. So we've got a couple of the pieces here that I've already done. we got that one, and we have this one, and then I have this one. I haven't done this yet. I wanted to, to show you guys. This one, along this bottom edge, just barely, it's just trimmed in just a hair too short. So when you put it in here, you'll see the metal underneath it. So I just took some white paint and painted around it. So then when I put that in there, and once the glue, the uh, I mean, sorry, resin gets in there, you won't be able to tell at all. So that's a little trick. You know, if you cut your cut your pieces just a hair, a hair too, you know, short. And don't get glue on the outside like I just did. Normally I'm a lot more careful about that, but. And the super glue you can kind of scratch off um, when you're all done. But make sure it's completely in there. Find the way you want to put it. We're just going to put that one in there, kind of up right there. Make sure it's all the way in there. You can also take like a, uh, a dry washcloth and that will help you seal down the edges without disturbing the paint. Because it'll kind of wipe off that glue as you're, as you're pressing it down. 
That way you won't have to get like <laughs> super glue under your fingernails as well. Okay. Let's take a look at around all the edges. I don't see anything popped up, so I think we're good on that. All right, so there are our pendants. What we're going to do is we're going to let them let them dry. Usually, let them dry overnight just to let the super glue dry really well, and then we'll come back and we will pour resin over our pretty little. Wow, I'm like way off. Sorry, guys. We'll pour resin over our pretty little pendants. There you go. Here's a good shot of them. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so. We've got our little pendants here. They're ready to be resined. Um, I've got way too much resin here for four little tiny pendants. So I'm gonna have to wander around the house looking for something else to pour resin on <laughs> when I'm done with this. Um, so one little tip for using resin, I'm not gonna do it here because I've only got four pendants in here, but if you have a lot of pendants that you wanna pour resin into, get you a little syringe, you know, like the little medicine syringes that you're you know kids always get when they get strep throat or something and they have to take an antibiotic get one of those and use the the syringe for the resin um, it works really well just to squeeze just a little bit in there you're not taking the chance on dragging your stick across with resin on it so just a little tip um, so mixing this resin this is the stone coat art coat resin awesome resin I love it 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 cures to this beautiful hard shiny glass like finish uh, it's lovely I really love it um, so if you guys want to order some of this resin if you look down below there's a a, a a promo code for $10 off of your order of $95 or more and I know that sounds like a lot but the resin lasts for a really long time so uh, you know they have smaller containers so but if you want want a, a $10 off coupon just look below I've got my stone coat promo down below and um, you really have to order some of this stuff. It's just lovely, beautiful resin. And I have found that when I pour it over my tiles, it just gives this gorgeous, almost creamy effect to the, the paintings. It's just beautiful. So um, try some of this out. I just normally use my little, my little popsicle stick, but just, like I said, you just gotta do it very carefully. And don't overfill your, your little pendants here because it will spill over and you'll ruin your pendant. So you want to kind of let it flow for a minute before you continue to add more resin. So I'm going to go to another one and let that flow a little bit around. Sorry my hands are in the way. It's not much I can do about that. And you can work with this resin for 45 minutes to an hour. It is, it's got a really long working time, which is really great because Especially for people like me who tend to mess up an awful lot. <laughs> but you can kind of see as it goes through that phthalo blue how it brightens up that blue again. It's just beautiful. And you see how here it's spreading around to the edges. And these particular pendants, um, the bezels, I just got from Hobby Lobby. I'll wait till they go on sale and I'll buy a few of them. Um, I love these round ones, but the bezels are really shallow. So that's why I'm saying you have to be super careful about the amount of resin you pour into them because they will overflow easily. But you do want to kind of have a, a domed look. So it's a very fine line between putting just the right amount in there and too much. We're going to go ahead and torch this. That will also help the resin move about a little bit but this phthalo blue on the white kind of looks almost like the uh, the Holland the Netherlands Delft uh, tiles if you've ever seen those they're beautiful I've, I'm actually starting to collect some myself um, have to look around like antique stores for this kind of stuff but I just you know I'm half Dutch so I love to collect the Delft I'm just really trying to be very careful. If you kind of dab it around towards the edges, it'll come to the edge and it'll dome. And if you're really careful, it won't go over. I can see it. I need some in this corner. 
There we go. And here. Okay, and that one's almost come to the edge, but not quite. I'm going to let it sit for another minute. You just kind of stick your stick. Don't stick your stick too close to the edge because then you'll just push it over. Now, you can, some of these bezels will allow you to kind of chip away at the resin and peel it off. But it's best just to not have to do that. Just try and keep it inside the bezel. So once you've got them all filled, it's all going to all the edges. You want to kind of take a look at it from the side and see if you have a dome to it. Now, I do not see a dome to this one. I see a slight dome to this one and a slight dome to that one. So I'm going to add a little bit more to my center. Just a little bit and let it sit there. I'm going to add pinch more to that center, a little bit more to that one, and a little bit more to this one. And that way, if you add it to the center, it will sort of slowly move towards the edges. But we're going to take the torch to it again. And then I'm going to take a look at the side and see what we've got looks like we're still needing a little bit more in that one. I mean, it's nice and flat. It's fine. But I kind of like the little bit of domed edge. You know, the domed surface is just, I don't know. It just makes it look a little nicer. And it like feels really good in your hands when you're rubbing on it. Resin just makes me happy. Okay, we're going to torch it again, take a look. Okay, so we're, we got a little bit of the domed look. So we're just going to leave it there. So we'll be back when these little pendants are cured. Um, and you guys can, can see them a little closer up. Uh, hopefully we won't get any dust in these. I don't like to pour two coats of resin on the pendants because Obviously, the first time, if you're trying to get a domed look, if you have to do it again, usually the resin will go off the side. So we're going to get these covered up, and we'll be back to show you the results. Hi, guys. I'm back. So I've got the finished pieces here. Uh, the little itty bitty chain pulls that we did are dry. Um, this one I'm not super thrilled about. It's kind of boring. But this one I think is going to work pretty well. Um, we could either use like the rectangular shape. I think that might work. Or I think even better is going to be another circular pendant. I think that's going to look pretty cool. Um, kind of looks like one of those spirograph patterns that you used to get like when you were a kid. The little, I don't know. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, so let me show you the pendants. They're finished. They're cured. They turned out pretty cool. So here is the first one. Let's get you in focus. Um, and as you can see, we have this lovely glass finish and it turned out really cool. And then we've got this rectangular one. It was giving me a few problems. It, it kept for some reason, like right here, it was popping up with air bubbles and I don't know why because they were right in the center and I had to keep sticking my toothpick in there to get the air bubbles to come up to the surface. But as you can see, we have a lovely finish on there. No air bubbles. And it turned out really kind of pretty. I love this one. It kind of looks like little feathers. And then this one we've got, I think it turned out pretty cool. I like it. It's just simple, kind of elegant. I don't know, just kind of neat. Almost bird-like, but very abstract. But if you turn it over, it looks like an owl to me little owl face. There's the eye and there's the beak that comes down and around and like the feathers above his eyes. <laughs> but I didn't want to put it in the pendant like that. 
because then I, I, I don't know, most people probably wouldn't see the owl. So I just put it in as a pretty, but the finish on that is really nice as well. And then last but not least, I think this one's my favorite. Um, it turned out really well, but I had a lot of problems. The resin kept going over the side, but I managed to pick it up and I took an alcohol swab and wiped with just the alcohol swab like this across the bottom and across the edges and it wiped all the resin off of it while it was still uh, uncured. So if you spill a little bit of resin over the side, pick up your pendant and ever so carefully try and wipe it with an alcohol swab on the bottom. And that works really, it worked really well. It's not sticky. You don't see any resin on the back of that at all. It worked really well. Um, so, you know, not all is lost if you dump resin over the side. The one thing about this pendant is it kind of has this little uh, wavy look to the resin. I'm not really sure why. Maybe because I kept fussing with it and kept moving it. Had to keep picking it up. Um, but I really like it. I like that waviness to it. It looks, you know, it just looks very handmade to me. So I think this is probably my favorite. Um, yeah, so now you guys know, if you want to do a chain pull, you can start really super small. Get you in focus there. There we go. Start really, really super small. Although the bigger chain pulls are definitely less frustrating. So maybe start a little bigger. Um, but I think because this, even though it doesn't seem to work down here, you have pieces like this one that look cool. So I think we may do some more of these. I may just, you know, do just create some. It depends on the interest. Um, if any of you guys want to want to purchase these, they're going to be for sale. So just email me. Um, you can write it down below in the comments, but a lot of times you guys don't see my comment back to you for some reason. So I want to make sure if you're interested in one of my pieces that you can get to me. So email me and, um, you know, say, hey, I'm interested in this particular pendant or painting or tile or whatever. Um, and, and if you can remember, tell me what video it's from. That, that helps a lot. And uh, yeah, and we'll work something out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, these were fun. These were fun to do. A little frustrating, but kind of fun to do. So, uh, definitely I think I'll do some more. Maybe some different colors. If you, you know, if you guys want to commission a piece, you know, you like this, but you don't necessarily like the blue, let me know. I can do it in other colors. Um, yeah. So, I want to thank all my subscribers, all my viewers, everyone who watches my channel. If you guys are not subscribers, please hit the subscribe button. We do all sorts of cool stuff around here. And, um, you know, it changes from video to video a lot. So if you don't like something we're doing today, you might like something next week. Um, and hit that bell so you know when I've posted a video. And uh, if you'd like to, to donate to my channel, of course, that is always welcome and very much appreciated. My PayPal link is below. You guys are the reason that I am able to continue with my channel. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. And I hope wherever you're on the planet, you're having an awesome afternoon, day, evening, or night. See you later. Bye.